Yes, my beautiful friends. I wanted to take a moment to uh, talk about some thoughts on knowledge. Um, my studies into the beast that is machine learning has given me some insights. Uh, we talked about dimension reduction, uh, but we've grown, so if that's definitely worth checking out. Uh, typically, uh, we think of knowledge uh, abstractly, like we, uh, let me give you a definition as an example. Facts, information, and skills acquired by a person through experience or education. The theoretical or practical understanding of a subject. The first part takes on a single point perspective, as that was traditionally the only way we could experience knowledge. The second part is a broader definition that hints to some underlying fundamentals. One elementary aspect to knowledge must never get to witness, directly at least, is the shape of knowledge. The human brain is incredibly dynamic, with at least a hundred trillion neural connections or synapses. It's like a simulation, one collectively smart enough to simulate itself in some ways. So combining all this and projecting into a three-dimensional space, we can get a glimpse of the shapes. Side note, I stole this image from Stephen Hawking. Please email me, Stephen. <laughs> By the way, special thanks to all my mentors. They led, me to, uh, they led me down this path. All this would not be possible without them. I have been reaching out to some of them I've been, as I've been working on a secret project since the beginning of this year. A uh, future video is coming out on that. It's going to be huge. So make sure to subscribe to not miss that. Okay, back to it. One mentor's suggestion was trying a simpler linear model. When we take a look at the output, we can see what it looks like. We see it gets stretched out onto a single plane. This is what linear means. Words are placed into a space and through iteration, we pull words into meaningful clusters. This model was useful for finding variants of words, which is useful for pre-training more efficient classification models. However, as we must first place each word on a line and move it around on this big one-dimensional plane, we can imagine how slow that might be. Linear models are fast on a small scale, but as we try to create bigger models, we must also add computing power at a linear scale. Taking it to the next level, using a more efficient model, we can build clusters of information at an accelerated speed. The Eureka moments start to show up at this point. In fact, we are able to learn through the process of training a model. In this way, we see shapes or clusters of knowledge. We can find the intersection of names, there are also cities, and a lot more. What we're looking at is a limited is limited to 10,000 words as visualizing is computationally expensive. However, we can always train a model on a bigger set of words and request single outputs. We can get a general definition of a word by looking at the physical proximity to other words. Or in the case of a single output, we would get probabilities showing the relations. In this way, we are able to confer meaning by dissecting the clusters of information. So this is only the beginning for me. The next step here is to implement a generative component. In this way, we would continuously feed information to the model. This would have the side effect of creating a model capable of generating meaningful text and a model capable of predicting the truthiness of the text. I believe a similar technique was used in Google's AlphaGo system. There is still a lot of untapped potential with my current text-based machine learning models. An interesting thought experiment I want to leave you guys with. Would a different model produce substantially different shapes if the outcomes are both successful in classifying the same data? Let me know what you think. Yes! I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. If you hated it, you know what to do. Thanks for watching.